trafficking. Listen to me. Conspiracy theories turning violent. Pizzagate. We have Wayfair. Online posts spreading misinformation. I will be on that flight. Mayhem over masks. As people search for purpose during the pandemic. Watch out for the mom walking in the store with her kids. An online fringe movement becoming more mainstream. This is everything you need to know about QAnon. I'm Katie Wilcox, the iTeam executive producer, and joining me today is investigative reporter Joe Dana. So Joe, let's start with the basics. Who or what is Q? Well, I, and I should say I'm not an expert on Q, but I can tell you what I've learned from experts, including the FBI. This is a conspiracy theory that began online in some dark corners of the web, and now it has created what experts call a digital cult, and they say it's growing. Now, Anon stands for anonymous. Q is the person who claims to be a government insider with exclusive knowledge about a worldwide network of pedophiles and satanic worshipers. Now, this Q individual drops cryptic clues that some say is sort of like choose your own adventure. Depending on who's seeing these clues, they interpret it however they want. But supposedly the clues are about this cabal of evil in the world. It alleges that Hollywood stars and prominent Democrats are involved in this. It's not just sex trafficking. She's also into taking these children for organs. I know that sounds bizarre, but that is what's truly going on. Now, common sense might tell you, as you, you, perhaps some people are hearing about this for the first time, that it just sounds absolutely absurd. There's no way something so outrageous could be kept secret. But that's why it's a conspiracy theory. It is largely based on what certain people want to believe or how they interpret it. The Q belief is infiltrating uh, many parts of our day-to-day -day lives, and more and more people are hearing about it and believing parts of it. And the FBI, again, has even issued a, a warning about it as well. We know that there's been some history of QAnon having some you know, problems, particularly here in Arizona. Tell me a little bit about this Tucson standoff. Yeah, there are Arizona connections. Two or three events here. There was a, a terrorism threat at Hoover Dam that was related to a Q believer. Uh, there's what happened in Tucson. And I think these are examples of how Q kind of changes and morphs and links to different groups at different times. Uh, one group calling themselves Veterans on Patrol in Southern Arizona had claimed that they found a camp where children were held and killed. QAnon latched onto this man's videos that he was posting about. He eventually got into a standoff with law enforcement and was taken into custody, but his videos showed migrant camps. Sadly, uh, they showed remains of some migrants who the man had said these were remains of actual children who were trafficked. And the FBI cited his case in a 2019 intelligence bulletin, uh, which was first reported by Yahoo News. In it, the FBI warned about this growing number of online conspiracy organizations. Conspiracy organizations. They list Q as a domestic threat because they say it can radicalize people uh, the same way a terrorist group radicalizes someone. They start to see themselves in this uh, spiritual battle that could be life or death. And so the way the FBI views this, these narratives that are put forth by Q legitimize or support violent action. Law enforcement have linked several incidents of violence around the country to Q believers. Let's talk about one of those biggest theories that has sort of come to light was potentially a very violent act and then, you know, now kind of still exists for some reason. Let's talk about Pizzagate. Fake news, now with real consequences. This is one of the original Q conspiracies. It suggested that this pedophile ring was operating out of a basement of a pizza restaurant in Washington, D.C., an actual restaurant there. The narrative suggested that there were certain symbols on the pizza menu and uh, images and paintings inside the restaurant that related to pedophilia and that there were secret doors and a secret basement there and, and that this uh, was all associated with Hillary Clinton. And this created real havoc for, for real people. Uh, the owners, the employees, they began to be accosted and harassed. What happened today demonstrates that promoting false and reckless conspiracy theories do come with consequences. And I hope that those that are involved with fanning these flames will take a moment to contemplate what happened here today and to stop right away. And in December 2016, a gunman burst into this pizza restaurant 
uh, supposedly looking for whatever you know he thought he would find didn't find anything but he did fire shots off there and that was kind of a wake up call people who take it to heart uh, can take it literally how did Q become so popular well so yeah you're talking about how and now it has this political bent as well and uh, especially with the president president trump in the Q world is viewed as sort of a savior figure who, uh, because he was elected in 2016, was put in position to stop this uh, global network of power brokers who are secretly, you know, running the world in different ways and that Trump is the only one who can uh, ultimately also round up these uh, people and bring them to justice. And so you do see Q signs at Trump rallies and you do see uh, a lot of Q rallies right now. We've had three in Phoenix uh, in August alone. We had them. They attract some people who may not necessarily be uh, like strong Trump supporters, but um, they, they are activists and they're people who feel that they are in this movement to save children around the world. And if I have to die for this cause, it's worth the cost. There is a real phenomenon of child trafficking and I shouldn't say phenomenon it's a it's a real crime that has happened and some children have been victimized by this you know most famously is maybe recently is the Jeffrey Epstein case talk to me a little bit about how QAnon uses sort of these real life events and then takes people into the next 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 thing as it gets deeper and deeper well people who follow Q obviously see the Jeff Jeffrey Epstein uh, saga as evidence right of this those in the uh, human trafficking law enforcement community will say that jeffrey epstein was sort of an outlier in what are typically the suspects of human trafficking and sex abuse uh, they say 90 percent or more of suspects are family members and people who are close to you in your inner circle who, who parents trust and so their frustration is, um, for example, a human national human trafficking hotline uh, has been bombarded this summer with a lot of people claiming Q conspiracies and wanting uh, le these leads followed up on. And they say, uh, you know, the public needs to be educated on what human trafficking typically looks like. And it's typically not, uh, say, the case of, of Jeffrey Epstein, who had this enormous amount of wealth. Now, what he did do which uh, probably does ring true for a lot of law enforcement, is he had a lot of money and he went to a vulnerable population and he convinced uh, you know, teenage girls who saw a little bit of money uh, to suddenly uh, be in his circle and then made them feel guilty if they were to uh, ever leave that circle. And uh, he sort of entrapped them with, it, with his money and power. Epstein took my sexual innocence in front of a wall of, famed fo of framed photographs of him shaking hands and smiling with celebrities and political leaders. I was only 15 years old. To go from, you know, wanting to send some money to a, a, a group that fights sex trafficking, for example, to then also believe that there's this secret group practicing cannibalism and satanic rituals and that they involve the biggest name in Hollywood is such a huge leap. And so you wonder how that's even possible. But that that is what is happening. We're all stuck inside. And I want to talk a little bit about the role of the pandemic in the potential spread of QAnon theories. And particularly the issue of, of masks. Uh, well, I interviewed uh, the director of what's called First Draft. This is a nonprofit that helps educate people about misinformation online. And she just pointed out from a, from a real big picture perspective that this is a time that a lot of people are seeing their worlds turned upside down. They're being asked to do things they never had before. And their faith is being tested a little bit in big major institutions, the government, the CDC, for example, when you talk about directions to wear masks. And uh, it creates a lot of strain and stress and worry. And, you know, in her view, a lot of people, they t t sometimes in those moments, they'll turn to something else 
And in this case, QAnon fills some of those holes. It provides some answers as to why the world seems so crazy. Over the last uh, three years, it has really grown. And so people who are watching this might have family members who have now become people who follow QAnon, who read posts from QAnon. We also have to understand that many people right now have had their lives turned upside down. What are some of the biggest tips for people who are, you know, just kind of scrolling through and maybe they want, you know, to learn a little bit more to, yeah. to tell what's real, what's not? What's real, what's not? Look. Uh, going out with friends these days, I, I talk to people who are saying I believe less and less in in uh, you know what I just see on the news because I don't know for sure what I can believe anymore. And, and my first tip is you know uh, give as much time to the professional news organizations, what they're sourcing and what they are reporting, as you might to the random Facebook feeds. And then uh, beyond that ask the common sense questions you probably grew up learning to ask when you're looking for something that's true or deciding whether it's true and look to see what the sources are of those materials and just because someone's trusted is is trafficking some of the information it doesn't mean it's necessarily true for example the president has retweeted QAnon users tweets even though the content is false or misleading because the president does it some people tend to maybe accept it outright. Unfortunately, when we have the president being ambiguous about this, we need absolutely clear lines, which is, you know, the FBI are concerned about QAnon. How are Republican leaders responding? So, you know, recently the third ranking House member in Congress, Liz Cheney, she just came right out and said QAnon is dangerous lunacy. But President Trump, as I mentioned, you know, he's retweeted this, these accounts. The other day he was asked about QAnon and uh, he did not condemn it. Can you talk about what you think about that and what you have to say to people who are following this movement right now? Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate, but I don't know much about the movement. Critics say he essentially endorsed QAnon by not condemning it. The theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but uh, is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. And we are, actually. We're saving the world from a radical left philosophy that will destroy this country. And when this country is gone, the rest of the world would follow. And we're seeing it grow in other places like Europe. We see people who put up rants on their Instagram accounts going from having a handful of followers to maybe thousands and thousands more. And you can make money by being a so-called social influencer. We've covered social influencers before. And so there seems to be this inequity in, you know, a viewer's ability to come across authentic news. I think you put it really well, distinguishing what is authentic news. We are in an attention economy. Uh, there are powers that are doing their very best to get our attention because that equals money. They're trying to get our clicks. And it's not by coincidence that some of these QAnon theories that people push end up relating to uh, traffic they get and money, advertisers. That's an ongoing battle I think we're all in right now, is separating fact from fiction and, and knowing uh, where the truth lies. Thank you so much again, Joe. All right, thank you.